I want to go over a video with a unique build for the Dragonfall uh, incursion in Nightmare 4. Uh, this build cuts out Huntress traps entirely. The only thing you'll need a Huntress for is DPS. Uh, this will be using Flamethrower Towers and Squire Cannonball Towers and Ballista Towers. Uh, for this build you will need a Walling Squire, a Tower Squire, a Flamethrower Apprentice, Preferably you'd have a second apprentice that would be dedicated for frosty towers, a boosting monk, and optionally a serenity monk. I'll go into that separation a little bit later. And uh, you kind of need a DPS huntress primarily, and a DPS mage would be nice. This is not a very good solo build. I recommend doing this in a group with at least two people. So to start... We start with the square walls like my other builds, same positions. I'm not going to go in depth as to where I'm positioning these things. Uh, I would recommend checking out my other video for the exact positioning, the logic behind that. From here, the build order is a little bit different. We will jump to the monk. This boost will get this wall and come as far back here as possible. This boost will get this wall and hopefully that wall if I position it correctly and come back as far along here. I'm going to jump back to my squire. Each side, since with magical, is going to receive two ballistas and two cannons. So you want to put this as far back as possible with the vector entirely within the magical resist lane. You don't want this venturing at all into the physical resist lane. That's why it's so far aimed to the side. Again, another ballista right in front of it with the same thing, not aiming into the physical resist lane at all. And we're going to use two cannonballs. Just facing into the center. I kind of placed this one wrong and that you should also be avoiding aiming this into the physical resist lane. You do have to be careful when these lanes are doubled up, say if this is magic and this is magic, that when you place this stuff that you don't venture into that lane for one. For two, that sometimes if your stuff from the middle is firing over here, it will hit this fence and absorb the shots. So just keep that in mind for when you have uh, different lanes set up. So I'm going to jump over here and build the same way. Ballista with the vector all within this lane. You might have to play with the positioning of these towers a little bit depending on what your range is and what spheres you've chosen to use. I'll probably do a video in the future about what spheres I'm using for this build. Um, I've currently, this is actually a pretty good build for low defense power players. Uh, when my friend has been building it for me, since I don't have this tower squire built yet, uh, he only has around 3,200 defense power with Splody Harpoon, and this still works very well. So you actually don't need a whole lot of stats to make this work. I'm going to jump over to my apprentice now, since the squire is pretty much wrapped up. Each side will get two frosty towers. And you might have to play with these positions again. If you're using a dual frosty and flamethrower build, you might have to move these farther up if you don't have the necessary range. I still recommend using a separate frosty apprentice so you get the freeze sphere. Uh, if you're using the flamethrower build, you won't get freeze sphere or large sphere. Um, and that's pretty helpful. Uh, this build doesn't rely as much on Frosties because you're using square towers, but it is nice to have some buffs for the flamethrowers. Now since mid is physical, I'm going to place the flamethrower towers. I'm not going to go into their positioning right now. Check out my other video about the flamethrower build. Um, it'll give you a better understanding of why I've chosen to put these where I have, and kind of the downsides and upsides to using these towers. So that's the basic build. Um, you have 30 DU left over. What I like to do is take a monk and place a Serenity Aura right here. This is where if you have a separate monk that you can use um, the Empowering Calm Sphere, I'll show it to you real quick, instead of this Boost Buck 8 Health Sphere, you can use the Empowering Calm, which gives hero damage, if you have a secondary monk. Uh, if you only have one monk, just place a Serenity Aura here. It'll help keep you healed, provide you with some damage protection. Um, this isn't necessary, you could choose to sub in something else, like a Lightning Aura, or a uh, 
secondary fro or not a secondary, but a fifth frosty tower. Just play around with it. You can decide what you want. I like Serenity Doors personally. Uh, from here, it plays out pretty much the same. Focus on upgrading the walls. You're going to need some upgrades for your cannons and ballistas. Check and see what's doing the most damage and focus on upgrading those first. Your flamethrowers will need upgrades as well. Uh, so your walls will kind of lag a little bit behind compared to the normal build. As in the normal build, you'll upgrade all of these once. Find out which is the hard lane. In this case, it is the mill lane. Upgrade that twice. That leaves you 160 mana that you can split between everyone. So you're with four players, everyone gets 40 mana for repairs. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a preliminary build. Uh, I've used it at least five times to success in a number of lane setups. But it, it actually works pretty well. I'm surprised how well it works. Uh, you just need repair, and if you have a full group, I've generally done it with two DPS Huntresses, a Squire, and a DPS Mage. The Mage focuses on the physical resist lane. The two Huntresses focus on the other two lanes. The Squire can get mana for everyone, and if necessary, if something leaks through, taunt them. Kind of do all of that. Uh, the Squire that we use is generally the person that builds these towers here. Um, so they're not even geared for particularly heavy uh, combat or tanky. And that about wraps it up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them and I'll get back to you. This is a, a pretty solid build. It's actually a lot of fun to do because it kind of breaks from the current meta right now with the traps and frosties. Uh, the frosties you still use, but right now you can get away with not using traps. So I hope you enjoy this. I'll catch you all later.